with our kinematic and dynamic equations and body axes in place, now we're ready to introduce the idea of flight dynamics state variables. So the matrix kinematic and dynamic equations that we developed uh, in the last uh, part of this lecture are compact, but they're a little bit difficult to see into. All the matrix products make them a little bit obtuse. Here we're going to write out these equations in full, and then next time we'll linearize the equations to enable us to look at what we call the natural response of an aircraft. Essentially, what happens when no one touches the controls. To start, let's set out a few definitions to make things a little clearer. So our location of the aircraft in our taxis. We'll give names to the components. This is going to be XE, YE, ZE. The velocity of the aircraft will define in body axes, and it will have components U, V, and W. The angular velocity we will likewise define in body axes, and we'll give those components names P, Q, R. The net aerodynamic force in body axes will give capital X, capital Y, capital Z. And the net aerodynamic moment in body axes will use capital cursive letters L, M, and N. We also need, of course, the Euler angles by theta and psi to specify the, or the aircraft orientation. Now, if we combine the position, orientation, and linear and angular velocity vectors into a single large vector, we obtain what we call a state vector. which we call x vector of t. And this is just one big long vector that's x e, y e, z e, phi, theta, psi, u, v, w, p, q, r. And I've written this out as a row vector here, but really it's a column vector, so we can transpose symbol. So we call this a state vector because it contains all of the variables that are needed to describe the system, including the position, orientation, linear velocity, and angular velocity. So this fully describes the state of the aircraft. And you can make an analogy here to how pressure and volume, or temperature and entropy, fully describe the state of a single phase thermodynamic system. Now from the linear and angular momentum equations that we developed last uh, in the last part of this lecture, we can see that the force Fb and the moment Mb should depend on the quantities in this state vector. However, it's also logical that these aerodynamic forces and moments will depend on the aircraft's controls which we can assemble into a control vector. Delta of T is delta A of E of R of F and delta T. And transpose, so this is really a column vector. Now the elements of this vector correspond to Aileron deflection, elevator deflection, rudder deflection, flap deflection, and engine thrust. Now these are common control inputs for aircraft, but it's possible for an aircraft to have not have some of these or to have other different control inputs. So now let's take a few minutes and review what these various deflections and controls 
correspond to. What we're going to do is briefly review aircraft control services here. But I've also put lecture notes and videos from 94370, which is Aerospace Engineering Fundamentals, on the course clue site, um, the LMS site, uh, so that for those of you who have not taken Aerospace Engineering Fundamentals, you can further go back and review the introduction of these concepts that was uh, covered in that course. Um, so you may want to take a break here uh, and review that before moving on, but a brief summary will be provided in the next part of this lecture.